climate scientists have been putting together climate models for several decades. Before looking at the projections of future climate change by current climate models, we can look at the projections by earlier climate models. Perhaps the most notable climate change projections of the 1980s were those of James Hansen. In 1988, Hansen and colleagues reported climate model simulations for three different emission scenarios. Scenario A assumed continued exponential greenhouse gas growth. Scenario B assumed a reduced linear rate of growth. And Scenario C assumed a rapid decline in greenhouse gas emissions around the year 2000. Scenario A was essentially a worst case scenario, whereas Scenario C was the best case. Scenario B was the most likely scenario. None of these future scenarios were an exact match to what happened, of course, and we now understand and simulate more of the complex drivers of change which were not included in Hansen's work. This figure shows the projections for these three scenarios together with the observed temperature change. Essentially, the data from 1958 to 1984 represent a hindcast, and that after 1984 represent a forecast. The easiest assessment of the quality of these projections is to compare the temperature trends predicted against that observed. Given that the actual greenhouse gas emissions have been closest to scenario B, let's compare against scenario B. Scenario B has a 0.26 degrees Celsius per decade temperature trend, whereas the observed GIST temp temperature trend has been 0.19 degrees Celsius. This is close, but scenario B has clearly overestimated the observed temperature trend in the forecast period. Why the discrepancy? Does this mean that Hansen's work was wrong? Well, there are two main reasons for Hansen's overestimate. First, Scenario B, which was closest to reality, slightly overestimated how much atmospheric greenhouse gases would increase. And second, Hansen's model had a rather high climate sensitivity of about 4.2 degrees Celsius for a doubling of atmospheric CO2. To have accurately reproduced the global warming observed, Hansen's climate model would have needed a climate sensitivity of about 3.4 degrees Celsius. This is within the likely range of climate sensitivity values listed as 2.5 to 4 degrees Celsius by the IPCC for a doubling of CO2. This would be just a little bit higher than the most likely value currently widely accepted as 3 degrees Celsius. The appropriate conclusion to draw from these results is not that the projections were wrong. The correct conclusion is that Hansen's study is another piece of evidence that climate sensitivity is in the IPCC stated range of 2.5 to 4 degrees Celsius for a doubling of CO2. Hansen's study also produced a map of the projected spatial distribution of the global surface temperature change in Scenario B for the 2010s. We can compare this map with observed global temperature maps to evaluate the accuracy of Hansen's spatial distribution. This map from NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies shows the global surface temperature anomaly in the period 2010 to 2019 with respect to the 1951 to 1980 baseline. Although the actual amount of warming has been less than projected in Scenario B, this is due to the fact that Hansen's climate model projected a higher rate of warming due to the high climate sensitivity. However, as you can see, Hansen's model correctly projected amplified warming in the Arctic, as well as hot spots in northern and southern Africa, West Antarctica, and more pronounced warming over the land masses of the northern hemisphere, among other things. The spatial distribution of the warming is very close to his projections. Hansen's work was stunningly accurate, quite frankly. Modern climate models have a grid resolution of a degree or less. Hansen's model had a far coarser grid. His model grid was 8 degrees by 10 degrees. Given the effect that grids have on the need to parameterize climate processes, we can understand the source of Hansen's model's high climate sensitivity. Thanks for listening.